Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video and in this one I'll be talking about GPU pass-through with the new platform, the Z490 from Intel. First, I'll take a look at the different motherboards that are offered and I will try to pick the best candidates for pass-through and then I'll take a look at an actual motherboard and the IOMMU groupings. So, let's get started. When doing GPU pass-through, we generally want to maximize the available PCI Express slots that we can assign to the virtual machine. And on the Z490, like with most Intel's non-HDDT platforms, we end up with this situation. The PCI Express slots connected to the CPU generally end up in one IOMMU group. So what that means is we can pass everything in that IOMMU group to the virtual machine. Take it or leave it. You can't, you generally can't split them unless you do ACS patching, but uh, it shouldn't matter because let's say you have your GPU and you have your uh, USB controller there. You should be able to assign them to the virtual machine and that should work fine. You are using your CPU, G uh, graphics card for your host. You should be fine. And most boards are like that. So let's take a look at an example. We'll use this gigabyte because they give us pretty decent uh, diagrams. So when we go to gigabytes website and look up the manual. So here we have the block diagram. And on this Aorus Elite, we don't even have that. We have one PCI Express by 16 connected to the CPU and the rest appears to be going through the chipset. So this wouldn't be an ideal candidate. You would end up pretty much having one PCI Express slot and you would only be able to assign your GPU. Everything else, uh, yeah, you would be out of luck. So this, I wouldn't use this board for GPU pass-through. So let's take a look at a different example. We'll take a look at uh, this Gigabyte Aorus Pro and we are choosing Gigabyte because of their good diagrams in their manuals. What do we see? We have two PCI Express by 8 that are available. So you either have one by 16 and you are not using the second one, or you have two by 8 PCI Express slots. Right here and right here. And the other one all the other PCI Express slots are connected to the chipset, so they are not very usable for us. But you can uh, use one for the GPU, one for a USB card. You know, it's up to you. So much better than the previous example. And let's take a look at different manufacturers now. So here we have MSI Z490 Gaming Carbon. And when we look at it, the block diagram is basically the same. We have two PCI Express by eights available to us, or one by 16. Again, that's what the switch means. There are total 16 lanes available from the processor, so you can switch them either eight by eight or one by 16. So, and the other PCI Express slot is connected to the chipset. We look at it, same layout. And this is a very common layout on these boards. Most of them will have a layout like this. So last one connected to the chipset. What else do we see? Let's take a look at this uh, Prime, Asus Prime. And here, Asus generally is pretty good with the description. So PCI Express slots, two connected to the processor and they say it right here and one to the chipset they say it right here and uh, in their block diagram you can see it in two places right here where they list expansion slots again two to the processor one by 16 to the chipset available uh, four lanes and you can look down here this is a very common chart in many Motherboard manuals too, so it tells you if you are using only one 
card, you have 16 lanes available to that one. If you are using two, you have eight lanes available. Okay, so now I would like to take a look at two of my favorite boards. So right here, the Strix Z490H. And with this one, you end up with uh, three PCI Express slots connected to the CPU, one, two, three. Right here. And they would be by uh, eight by four by four. So you can connect your GPU, a USB controller, and some sort of a storage device and pass all of them together to your virtual machine. Pretty good. The price isn't, it's, it's not one of the super expensive boards either. So I like this one. And then there is a slightly more expensive Strix. And it's this one, this is the Dash A. And same, same idea here. We would end up with by eight by four by four and a PCI Express slot uh, connected to the chipset right here. So these would be my go-to choices for choosing a board for GPU pass-through on Z490. If I were choosing a mini ITX board, I would go with the ASRock Z490 Gaming. The reason is it's built in Thunderbolt controller and that would allow me some expansion options when my only PCI Express slots is taken up by the GPU connected to the guest. Other than that, all the mini ITX boards look the same to me. So this would be, in my opinion, the main differentiator. Okay, I want to mention this Asus ProArt, which is a super nice board. It has 10 gig networking and Thunderbolt two CPU connected PCI Express slots, but I think it's it's a very good board for anything else but GPU pass-through. The reason being, when you use this bottom PCI Express slot that's connected to the chipset and you would plug in anything in there, even that 10 gig network card, your Thunderbolt becomes unavailable. So you kind of lose one of the features. And if you plug it into one of the CPU connected slots, that makes uh, the IOMMU group not really viable unless you want to pass the 10 gig network card and your GPU to your virtual machine, which uh, maybe that's what you want to do. But uh, the, the layout isn't really the best for this use case, but for anything else, it's an awesome board, I think. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Okay, now, Let's take a look at IOMMU groups of uh, one of these boards. And I'm using this Asus Prime. So let's see what the IOMMU groups look like. To see the IOMMU groups, I'll be using my IOMMU viewer and I'll leave the link in the video description. The GPU I'm using is in group one together with the USB controller I'm using. And then what else do we see? So there is a, the onboard ethernet controller. It's right here, again, in its own IOMMU group. There is another ethernet controller plugged into the chipset connected PCI Express slot right here. And uh, that happens to be in its own IOMMU group. Each of the ports is in their own IOMMU group. The two NVMe drives, one here and one here, are in their own IOMMU group too, which is very nice. But I've been having issues passing through this Intel drive, so it doesn't matter where the OS is installed. I can never pass through that drive regardless of uh, which slot it's in. So this one just won't, for whatever reason, on this board. Uh, I'm not able to pass it to the virtual machine, but this uh, Samsung, I was actually able to do this one. So, and the rest of it is just kind of grouped together with random stuff mostly. The USB controller would be nice, but it's bunched together with uh, memory controller or whatever. So, uh, let's create a virtual machine and let's see what we can do. Virtual Machine Manager. 
And let's create a quick VM. So let's see what we can assign. We'll go with host devices. We'll do the usual. Now we have to do the PCI uh, USB card. And let's try some of the stuff connected to the chipset to see whether that goes through. So the Samsung, that's the interesting one. Will the Samsung go through, right? Let's try the 10 gig network adapter that's uh, connected into the bottom PCI Express slot connected to the chipset. So we'll do both of them. So we'll get changing it to this. What else should we try? And let's take the Ethernet controller from the from the host. Let's steal that if I can find it right here. So let's see what happens when we try to launch the virtual machine. And I'll keep all the spice and virtual GPU because I don't want, don't want to deal with it too much. So let's see what happens. Okay, and I'll quickly install it so my uh, PCI Express add-in card works. I mean a PCI Express USB card. We'll soon see whether the, the NVMe drive works. Right there. That's working. Okay. So here we are in Windows, our virtual machine. And let's see what we have there. So it sees all our Ethernet controllers. It sees our GPU, our PCI USB card is working. So what I'll try to do, I'll try to install some of the drivers and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm done updating. And we got the GTX 980 working, connected to the first PCI Express slot. Our USB 3 card is working, connected to the second PCI Express slot that goes to the CPU. Our Samsung 960 is working, and that's connected to one of the NVMe slots on the motherboard. So as I said, I was only able to get the Samsung working, the Intel SSD just wouldn't work when trying to pass it through regardless of the slot it's connected to. Even if I installed Linux as a host machine on the Samsung, the Intel still wouldn't budge. So I was, I was only able to pass through that Samsung drive regardless of what I tried. So the network controllers, the onboard one is uh, being used by the virtual machine. The 10 gig connected to the chipset PCI Express slot, uh, that one is working too. So overall, I would say success. It's very nice that all these uh, devices are in their own IOMMU groups, but I still wouldn't rely on something like this. It's nice that it's working, but I would prefer my CPU connected. Uh, devices so the motherboards that have more cpu connected pci express slots would be preferable uh, in my opinion because this could change with future maybe bios updates or who knows what but for now it's uh, working it's working pretty well so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video